Good afternoon. Opening today's special board meeting of Santa Rosa City Schools on July 26, 2023. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we will take public comment on open session agenda items only. Um, I have no group cards, so we will move on to our remote attendees. If there are members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on the open session agenda only, please raise your hand. President Canary, there are no hands raised. Thank you. At this time, we'll move on to our first discussion, um, our first action item of the evening. Um, action number one, approval of sublease VPM LLP. The board will consider approval of a sublease agreement with VPM LLP for one time Stony Point Road, Suite 210, Santa Rosa, California 9401. I will hand this over to Superintendent Trimnell and Associate Superintendent Cap. Thank you, President Manieri, members of the board, those who are with us in person and online. Um, we bring this sublease to you this evening for consideration as we consider the portable buildings here at the district office that are in, uh, that have basically gone past their lifetime and are in disrepair. Um, and we are considering the relocation, a temporary relocation of the district office to this particular space, and we'll talk about additional space in the next agenda item. But specifically, this agreement is regarding a sublease with BPM LLP. And I will hand it over to Ms. Gavin for any further details. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. With this um, lease, the, uh, we would have non-exclusive access beginning August 1st to be able to um, install and set up our network infrastructure and we can begin planning for where stuff would go and how this would look, how we, we would be able to serve the public in our new space. Uh, again, temporary. It is a uh, four-year lease with an option to terminate. Now, you can see here that the rent um, does increase slightly uh, 3% each year. And the other thing to consider is that it is a full service lease. So that means that utilities and, and all of those services are included. Any questions? I will point out that the red line is because it was a form. It, it would be as we believe it because it keeps it as a red line. That's been completely vetted and reviewed by our legal counsel. Um, sorry, just uh, are we having any technical difficulties? I'm getting some um, feedback that it was a little bit hard to hear Lisa, and um, they're saying that it's not much better now that I've turned up the volume on, the, on my audio. I can try and speak up, and I will share it that better. Do a little bit more talking okay. and we'll find out. <laughs> it's a four year, it's a four year lease. Uh, I would we have non-exclusive access beginning uh, August 1st to be able to do set up our network infrastructure and be able to plan for staffing um, location and how we would serve the public best for this new location. And we would have exclusive right to be able to move in August 7th. If I could add and I see um Trustee Flores's hand. If I can add that uh, there would be a phase in move of district office staff um, because of the availability of the spaces that we're considering tonight, uh, there are certain departments that we would be moving first, followed by the rest at a little bit of a later time. And this would give us also the opportunity to plan for whatever the permanent structure looks like for the district office. So there's just an urgency due to the disrepair of the facilities. 
Um, I see Director Flores' hand up and Director Lennox. Uh, you asked my question. Thank you. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what the access to the public would be like to the to those offices and um, and how we intend to notify you know, our school community that the DO won't be here, as well as kind of like what the phase that will look like for um, for public consumption and notification. Yeah. So thank you for the question. Um, so the building itself has business hours, uh, which mirror hours. And so um, as our staff, this is not a 24 hour facility. We would mirror the hours that we have available right now, which is open to the public from eight to five. Uh, and um, that would be during the sort of business work day. There would be some after hours activity as we tend to do here at our district office where we might be engaging with our families or staff trainings or the community. And um, the, the larger space where we would do that isn't, and that's a separate agenda item tonight, but um, that space won't be available to us till a little later this year. So we would continue to use these common spaces here at the district office until we could transition. So we would have to communicate which services are over at Stony Point, uh, and which services are remaining here. Again, emphasizing that this is temporary and also very needed um, for the safety and security of all of our employees. And then you have another question. How are we rolling out um, kind of notification to the public about what they can still expect here and yes. like that phase out? So I think that's where we will share information of address, times, departments, contact information. Um, we're able to network our information out to the Stony Point so we won't have to change phone numbers, things like that. That will be consistent as far as I know. Uh, and um, we will have to start with literally um, deciding who will be moved. And then once that's decided, then we'll start communicating out to our own staff and then to our broader community. But everything stays here for now until we start messaging that. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Flores. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think this is a three-year lease. Depending on the construction that uh, will happen here on, on this grounds, what if, and this is a what if question, sorry about that, um, uh, the construction takes longer than three years, uh, uh, do we have to like? Are we in for another three years after that? It's, it's a four year yeah. lease. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of a safeguard. Okay, got it. All right, and that's a smart question, actually. But what what if it takes longer than four years? Right. We could always negotiate an extension. An extension. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but we don't have to redo it for another additional four years. We can just do it by monthly. Yeah, depending on the terms that they'd like to set at that point where they're looking at their bottom line and, and what they need as far as a business. But yeah, we would have to renegotiate. Mm -hmm. well, Director Delaford. Do we know which departments would need to be moved first and will there be any impact on the start of the school year before the a week after the initial moving date? We so do. Um, we do know the departments. We've not communicated that to our internal staff. And so I don't want to cause you know, anxiety around that, um, but we do know, and there would not be an interruption of service. Uh, we would always have staff working um, and would try to minimize the, um, let, you know, the unavailability of staff, but service will always be available. Uh, I think my biggest concern is just the beginning of the school year and new families to the district and that, that last minute rush of getting prepared and for a new school district, mm -hmm. there any disruption on addresses or locations um, yeah. we can be very clear and transparent about that so the community and the staff is aware of yes. the best of their understood yeah. Yeah. so according to the contract so these contracts um the site is ada compliant my question is does it currently or by you're saying august 8 will it meet our ada needs yes we don't foresee uh, it's because it's on us, I guess, that we need to change and modify. So it is ready to go. We won't have to make any ADA compliance adjustments. 
Um, it will be more about just space and how we manage our team with the um, and maximize the use of the space. Are there any other board member questions? Okay. Uh, this is an action item, so we are looking for um, a motion on this item. I move to approve a sublease. Second. Thank you. That was moved by Director McNally and seconded by Director Lenafuth. Roll call vote, please. Director McNally. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director Sheffield. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Vanieri. Aye. Thank you. Item E B2, action item approval of lease, SR Stony Point DE LLC. The board will consider approval of a lease agreement with SR Stony Point DE LLC um, for 110 Stony Point Road, Suite 105 AB, Santa Rosa, California, 95401, and 110 Stony Point Road, Suite 225 um, at the same address. And I will hand this over to Superintendent Chanel and Associate Superintendent Cap. Thank you, President Manieri and members of the board, those are with, who are with us in person and online. Um, this is the other part of the lease uh, that we are considering uh, in moving our entire district office over to Stony Point, with the exception of some maintenance and operations, um, child nutrition services, and warehouse, which will remain. Um, and we're still working out some of those logistics even. Um, but this is a, a piece of the lease that is actually not currently available to us. It will technically not be available to us until after February, but could be as soon as November of this calendar year. There is a person, there is an organization currently leasing the space. And so we are working within their parameters. They are trying to downsize their organization. Uh, and so they're actually looking for other workspace uh, in the community. Um, just they're going from the space of about um, 17,000-ish down to about 5,000 square feet as far as what they actually need. Their staff is already limited. Uh, so they're just trying to, to locate that. There is a small space, the suite 225, that would we would occupy at the same time as suite two tenants, just adjacent to it. Which is actually ready now. Mm -hmm. So that would be the one space within this lease that is available to us now. Are there any board member questions on this item? So, the monthly rent for suite 225 is $3,000 per Yes. Yeah, it, it's a much smaller space. Um, and then the other issue is that the downstairs, um, we do need to determine what the configuration of that would look like, depending on, on the needs and, and for our staff and, and the other board meetings, or we hold those there. Something that is attractive about this space is that it has a rather large space that we might consider for large meetings, large training facility space. Um, and potentially, if need be, an alternative location for board meetings. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility in our uh, and creativity with that space downstairs that is accessible to the public. Director Delatory. And if I hear from properly vetted that all three of these leases and space is what's needed to properly house the staff during the transition. Yes. Are there any other questions on this item? Director Medina? So just on the on the early termination, there's a little difference between both, right? Mm -hmm. um, is it is this one like 10 months versus months? Yes, that is correct. So this is a direct lease with the owners of the property. And so they have they have a little bit different parameters. The sublease, they're on the hook for the full amount regardless. So there was a little more negotiating that we were able to do with the sublease versus the direct lease. They're, they're the sublease, they're continuing to have to pay their full amount. So we are just, this is a cost savings to them. They were willing to take a little bit um, 
more leeway to give us a little more leeway with the with the termination, the early termination. I got my question. Um, could you explain what the vetting process is to get into a, a lease agreement as a, as a public entity? Um, just so I, I understand that. Sure. So this is actually. As long as we aren't using this for student space, it's it's really administrative offices. And so it's really just making sure that it conforms with our general operations as a, as a government entity. So making sure that we're not going into a space that's say serving alcohol on our premises or you know something like that. There's not, um, we don't have a requirement um, as a school district. We don't, we don't have the same requirements as say some of the other some other government agencies. The, the other piece is that we are still required to have our district office within our school district mm -hmm. boundaries. And so that made it challenging for us to find spaces that were large enough that were near move in ready um, based on the timing of our needs here currently at the district office. Um, and, and the available spaces right now that are for lease. We actually even looked at whether we should uh, consider purchasing property. And um, that wasn't fe feasible for us with the spaces that we did take a look at, but we do still have to remain within our district boundaries. And this space is within our district boundaries. So there's no bid in process like we would do? No, right? no, not a requirement. Are there any other questions? Director Dillatouche. So one point that come up, um, and I don't know if we talked about it, addressed it, um, the fact that there's an employee inclusive lease that some of their employees will be on site working. Um, do we have to do any additional background checks or vetting for them if there was ever any contact with our students on site? Or do we not think this is going to be any students on site ever in the next year? So because the space is not um, sanctioned for us to hold classes and to have youth there on a regular basis, um, we do not re need to require that of the building staff maintenance and operations and custodial that they have those background checks. If children are on site, it's normally with a parent or with a supervised adult. And so we will continue to be responsible for their care. Make sure that we understand who's responsible for what we got that covered. Any other questions? I think this is an action item. So, um, unless there are any further questions or discussion, we are seeking a motion on this. I'd like to move to approve the lease uh, for 110 Stony Point Suite 105 AB and 110 Stony Point Suite 225. Second. Thank you. That was moved by Director Lena Cruz and seconded by Director Medina. Roll call vote, please. Director Dana Cruz. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director Sheffield. Aye. Director McNally. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Manieri. Aye. Thank you. Um, Superintendent Trinnell, any last announcements before we adjourn? Yes, thank you. I just um, want to share how um, grateful we are that the board is supportive of this move. It is a huge deal uh, for us because we are a piece of the fabric of our community. And what is very exciting is that we have the potential to actually establish something more permanent, uh, which will be a part of the facilities master plan discussion about the future of a more permanent district office, which is primarily made up of portables of 70 plus years and older. <laughs> so thank you so much. And thanks to everyone who joined us tonight and for all of the work involved to get us here. Thank you. Thank you, thank Superintendent you. Janelle and, and team for this really big lift. It's, we also acknowledge that, that it's, a, it's a big lift to, to make this move. So thank you. Okay, with that, this meeting is adjourned.